Welcome to my video number 3A, containing numerous examples of strong links and weak links, whose definitions we learned in video number 3. As I mentioned earlier, the main videos in the course will contain a detailed explanation of each solving technique, including the proof of why it works and why it's true, followed by a few quick examples. And then in these adjunct videos, denoted by the letter A, I will show you a lot of extra examples of the associated technique along with several insights and tips that may pop up as we're going along. And by the time we get to the end of the course, we will have hopefully covered everything imaginable. That's my mission. That's my goal. But this particular adjunct video is really important because I want to drive home the point of exactly what I mean by conventional strong links, conventional weak links, effective strong links, and surrogate weak links. So I'm glad you're watching. I may be the only person in the world using these terms, but if you can get a handle on them, I think these concepts will really be helpful to your overall understanding. If you read and understood all the text overlays in video number three, you will already know what I'm talking about. But just in case you didn't, we will seal the deal here in this tutorial. After watching today's video, you will be a master of strong links and weak links. Okay, let's go over to the puzzle board. Okay, let's look at a few random puzzles, and I'll point out some strong links and weak links so you can get an idea of what to look for as you are analyzing and solving Sudoku puzzles. Now, I know some of you are already looking at this puzzle and saying, oh, this is the solution to that cell, or oh, look, you can eliminate that candidate. But that's not what we're doing right now. We're not trying to solve this puzzle, so forget all that. We're just learning how to identify the different types of links, okay? And remember, these will all be what I call conventional links, simply meaning normal links between two same-digit candidates within a house or between two different digit candidates within a cell. The reason I call these conventional links is because when we start making chains and loops, the rules will have a couple of interesting and surprising twists that we will cover later. There is indeed a strong link between the two endpoints of an alternate inference chain, and I call this type of link an effective strong link, because it is not a strong link in the conventional sense, where the two candidates have to see each other. The two endpoints of an AIC do not necessarily have to see each other, and it is also possible for both of those endpoint candidates to be true simultaneously. So to me, this type of strong link falls into an entirely different category, which is why I have a special name for it. But don't worry, as long as we take it step by step, it will all come together and make sense for you in the end. Trust me on this. It's not that complicated. You'll see. So basically, we have four types of conventional links. Strong links between candidates that are the same digit, strong links between candidates that are different digits, weak links between candidates that are the same digit, and weak links between candidates that are different digits. So first, let's look for some conventional strong links between two candidates that are the same digit. These will always be the only two remaining instances of a particular digit occurring within at least one house, i.e. a row, column, or block. And remember that these are also called conjugate pairs. Strong links between two of the same digit are called conjugate pairs. And they will play a huge role in a large percentage of all the various solving techniques, so it's very important to know how to recognize them and find them. Okay, let's take a look. Here in row six, we see that there are only two candidate fives. They are the only two fives in row six, therefore, there is a strong link between them, and that is a conjugate pair. In column three, we see that there are only two candidate twos, so there is a strong link there. In row eight, there are two candidate fours, and not only are they in row eight, but they also lie entirely within block nine, so they are called locked candidates, and we'll learn more about those later. And here's another set of locked candidates. These two ones here in column nine are also locked. That is a strong link and a conjugate pair. The two ones are the only two candidate ones in column nine and the only two candidate ones in block nine. 
Now let's look at a block. In block eight, we see that there are only two instances of candidate six. So that is also a strong link and a conjugate pair. Don't forget, don't neglect the blocks. I know it's easy to focus on the rows and the columns, but blocks are houses too, and you need to watch those. In row six, we have two instances of candidate two only. So that is a strong link. They're the only two twos in row six. In column seven, we have two candidate nines. So that is a strong link. And in column four, there are only two candidate eights in the entire column. There are the only two eights in column four. So that is a conjugate pair and there's a strong link between those two eights. And in row four, there are two sevens. That's also a locked, those are locked in block five and row four, but that is a strong link between those two sevens. And in row seven, we have two candidate sixes. So there's a strong link between those because they are the only two sixes in that house in row seven. All right, let's take a look at another diagram. In block six, we have two candidate twos. So that is a strong link. They're the only two twos in block six. Now notice in a block, they'll always be on a diagonal because if they're not, then they're in a row or a column as well. But if it's only in a block, they're going to be on a diagonal like that. So there's a strong link between those two twos. In block one, there are only two candidate fours, also on a diagonal. They're the only two fours in block one. So there's a strong link between those two fours and they are a conjugate pair. In block four, we have two candidate eights. There's a strong link between them because they are the only two candidate eights in block four. Now in row three, we have two candidate threes. So that is a strong link between those two threes in that row. And in row four, there are only two candidate twos. So there's a strong link between them, and that is a conjugate pair. In block six, we have two candidate fives. So that is a strong link. And in block six, we also have two candidate nines. They're the only two nines in block six. So there's a strong link between those two nines. And in block three, there are only two twos. Those two twos are strongly linked and they are a conjugate pair within block three. In column three, we see that there are only two candidate fours. And in row six, there are only two candidate fives. So there's a strong link between those two fives. And in column nine, there are two nines. That's a strong link. They are a conjugate pair because they're the only two nines in column nine. And in row six, there's a strong link between these two nines because they're the only two nines in row six. Now remember, you can't connect that nine with this nine. They have to be in the same house. Now for those of you who are doing the puzzles in pencil and paper, and you're filling in the candidates by hand, or pencil marks, as you, if you want to call them that, you have to be really diligent about doing that because if you make a mistake, you're going to mess the whole puzzle up. And every time you enter a digit into a cell as the cell's value, you have to remove that candidate from every cell that can see where that is. So in other words, if you fill in a nine into the puzzle into a cell, Every candidate nine that's in that row, that column, or that block, you have to erase it. Otherwise, it's going to confuse you and you're not going to solve the puzzle. Now, with these computer programs, they put these automated candidate lists in there. And for instance, if you solve this cell right here, cell row six, column nine, and you solve that for nine, it's going to eliminate, I don't know if you saw that, there's a nine here in row six, there's another nine here in block six, and there's another nine here in row nine. So when you enter a nine in here, it automatically removes those three candidate nines. Here, let's see. There was one here, one here, and one here. Now when I fill this square in as a nine, 
it removes a nine from those three colored squares. It does it automatically. That's so handy. And another thing that you can do is you can uh, highlight the remaining instances of any candidate. Like for instance, you can say, where are all the nines? And it will light them up. And so here you see that there's that strong link between those two nines in row six, and you can see the strong link between the two nines in column nine, and you can see the strong link between the two nines in block six. And likewise, you can see there's a strong link between these two fives. Now all the fives, all the remaining candidate fives are highlighted, and there's a strong link here in column one. So these filters, they make it really easy to see these strong links. Like here's another one between row six, column two, and row six, column seven. There is also a strong link there with those fives. Okay, let's go to the next type. So now we're looking for conventional strong links between two different digit candidates. And these are by far the easiest ones to see. They will always be and can only be the last two remaining candidates in any particular cell. And as we know, this is called a by value cell, by meaning two. This is the only way there can be a conventional strong link between two different digit candidates. So let's take a look here. In row one, column one, we see that there is only a seven and a three. So there's a strong link between those two candidates. But remember, these are not called conjugate pairs now. The only ones that are called conjugate pairs are type one, where it's conventional strong link between two same digit candidates. These are different digits, so they cannot be called a conjugate pair. Here we have an eight and a two. That's a strong link. Here we have four and an eight. There's a strong link within that cell. There's a strong link. There's a strong link here between this four and this two. There is a strong link between this five and this eight because that's a by value cell and there's a strong link because there are only two possibilities in that cell. If one is false, the other is true. That's the definition of a strong link. So here, this eight and this two are strongly linked. If the eight is false, the two is true. And if the two is false, the eight is true. One of those two candidates has to be true because they can see each other and there's a strong link between them. Here, the five and the eight are strongly linked. And over here, the eight and the nine are strongly linked. Any bi-value cell has a strong link between the two candidates in it. Here, the four and the nine are strongly linked. The two and the five are strongly linked. They're very easy to see. The seven and the five here are strongly linked. And as I said before, if you have a computer program, it usually has an option to highlight the by value cell. So here in this program, this lights up all the cells that I have only two candidates left and it makes them easy to see. And these by value cells are probably the most important cells when you're making change. They really help you because they provide a weak or a strong link because remember a strong link can be used as a weak link. So if you want to connect that eight and the three as a strong link, it's a strong link. And if you want to connect it as a weak link, you can use it also as a surrogate weak link. Okay, but if you're not using the filters, they're still easy to see. Any cell that has only two candidates in it, there's a strong link between those two candidates, between the two and the nine, between this eight and the two, so like I said, these are so easy to see. By between the four and the eight, there's a strong link there. Okay, so that covers all the strong links. Now we know what strong links between the same digit candidates look like, and we know what strong links between two different digit candidates look like. They have to be a by-value cell. So next, let's move on to the weak links.